What's happening all you curious cats and kittens? Welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. While it's sad to be alive to witness all these animals going extinct, there's still some from millions of years ago we're probably glad we don't have to shoo off of our doorstep. They were pretty terrifying and a lot bigger and scalier and wet for some reason, they're always wet. This is a part two, you know exactly why you're here. I'm Taylor McWaters and here are 10 more prehistoric creatures we're glad went extinct. Let's get anxious. Kicking off the list at number 10, there is a Nosaurus. There is or there isn't, because that name is misleading. No, they've been dead for 75 million years. They're for sure gone. There is a Nosaurus, fun name also known as the Reaping Lizard. It was first discovered in 1948. It could grow up to 10 meters long and weighed about five tons, quite the unit. But the feature that stands out the most on this long neck raptor looking dinosaur is its massive claws. The thing's got baseball mitts for hands. It's quite intimidating. This is where the Greek gods got the name from. Therizo means to reap or to cut off. This is the Freddy Krueger of dinosaurs. Now, although its choice of meal was always a salad, it didn't shred animals up unless it had to in self-defense, in which it was probably pretty easy. They would just be like, he, and then it's gone. Or a bunch of plants, he, there we go, we're eating. The first fossil was discovered in the late 1940s from a Soviet Mongolian fossil expedition, and they found the claws first, which must have been pretty intimidating because for 10 years, they really had no idea what this creature was that these claws belonged to. In the early 50s, they found more bones and eventually the pieces of the puzzle fit together and they realized that it wasn't a turtle like they originally thought. I also love that concept art. That would have been a pretty cool turtle, but alas, it's just a larger, much more terrifying dinosaur. And before we continue on with this list, if you're loving all this dinosaur goodness, click that thumbs up. Let's give a thumbs up for the fact that none of these still exist. That's a good sign. Let's, let's keep this going. Number nine, Helicoprion. Perhaps one of the weirdest sea creatures to exist about 250 million years ago, this looks like a shark, but scientists now know that it was actually related to chimeras, which is a fish that separated from the shark fam about 400 million years ago. This 25 foot long fish was first discovered by Andrzej Zarpinski in Russia back in 1889. He got the name Helicoprion because it translates to spiral saw. This guy found teeth fossilized in a spiral formation, which is wild to find that. He must have been scratching his head for weeks. Paleontologists all agree today that this was not part of a fin. It wasn't a wacky spinal cord like somebody who I'm talking about later on in this list. Its teeth coiled up and it was attached to the lower jaw of the fish and its snap was the same power roughly as a crocodile. So new teeth would form and then in turn these spirals would get longer and longer and coil in. Adult fish would have four rotations in their mouths and I thought an ingrown toenail was uncomfortable. This, oh my god, I couldn't even imagine. No thanks. Number eight, dire wolves. If you're from South Westeros, this one might hit close to home. About 10,000 years ago, which is pretty close compared to all the other animals on this list, dire wolves were still a thing. Now, if you've watched Game of Thrones, which you should have if you haven't, go watch it. Go watch the whole show after you've done this. Yeah, easy. You're probably nodding your head right now or getting tissues, maybe both, I don't know. Dire wolves come in at around the same size as a gray wolf today. So it's not like a mega wolf with three heads or anything insane. There's no teeth coming out of its neck, but it did weigh a lot more. It was eating pretty good. Their jaws were much stronger, so crushing animal bones or humans weren't really a problem. They would actually hunt down and eat horses. Yeah, you know, like, Horses? After studying their teeth, that was their go-to snack. Currently, if you're in the market for seeing 400 dire wolf skulls, head to the Page Museum in Southern California. They found hundreds of thousands of these things in the library or tar pits. Dire wolves and saber-toothed cats would get stuck in these pits, and then depending on who stuck that day, the latter would then come along, eat them, and then unbeknownst to them, they were actually walking into their own similar fate. It's just people going in, eating, sinking. Going in, eating, sinking. It's horrible. Number seven, Arthoplura. These creepy crawlies translates to jointed ribs, which sounds so gross off the bat. Okay. Arthoplura were these gigantic millipedes. How gross. They would grow up to six feet long. It was the largest known invertebrate to this day. Thankfully, there's nothing bigger than this, so you can throw up once and then you're good. It ruled all over the arthropods, so any other spider, insect, crustacean was nothing compared to this horror. They roamed the land during the Paleozoic period and they would crawl around at much higher speeds than today's millipedes, which is alarming because those things literally will go around your house in like one minute. And they ate decomposing organic matter. So no, they wouldn't gobble you up if you went back in time, don't worry. 
The reason all these monster bugs got so large, by the way, was because 300 million years ago, oxygen made up 30% of the air, whereas now we're only sucking in 21%. We're getting hand-me-down bug air, which is awesome. So we luckily, though, don't have any monster bugs, just a dying hot planet that we have to deal with instead. Number six, Epikion. Much more than just a dog, these extinct canines were known as bone-crushing dogs. Much different than your, you know, schnauzer. They would come in at around five feet long, greatly resembling a grizzly bear. Their massive head would come in handy during all these hunts, and it had the head size of a lion, and its jaw certainly played the part as well. Lions, tigers, and bears all rolled up into one furry 300 pound sack of holy <laughs> It was made to crush, literally. Its fourth premolar was enlarged, just like some hyenas. So just like bears, this thing too lived in what's now North America, and they went extinct about six million years ago, which is pretty recent considering other guys as well. Could you imagine camping and all of a sudden this thing comes in? Sorry, all of a sudden this thing runs in? No way, never, not a chance. Number five, Mega Piranha. We talked about Megalodon in part one, but here we are with another Mega. Mega Piranha, sounds like a Marvel Comics villain from the 70s, but in reality it was much worse. These things obviously were much bigger than today's piranhas. They came in at about one meter long and they ruled the water around Argentina. So six million years ago, you wouldn't want to take a late night skinny dip or else you probably wouldn't come out of the water. Its bite force was 50 times its own weight, which is scary for any fish, but when they're 30 pounds on average back then, that's some quick maths, that's gonna hurt. Its bite can outchomp Megalodon, like, come on. Even today, the word piranha makes people anxious because our modern day black piranha, sure it weighs two pounds, but its razor sharp teeth and bite force is still pretty intimidating. I'm sure Mega Piranha will be the villain in some huge blockbuster with some actor. Mega Piranha 3DDD part three or something stupid. Number four, Lynn Hennekes. If you thought a T-Rex had tiny arms, wait until you see this dude. Linhenicus monodactylus roamed the lands of Mongolia 65 million years ago. I'm a fan of this little dinosaur. It's actually always giving other dinosaurs the middle finger, which is great. So it had a little arm and one finger claw type scenario. He had ice cream cones for hands, essentially. In terms of these other monsters on this list, it's pretty small. It came in at the size of a parrot. Now this little guy would lay eggs and carve through anything that snuck into their nest. It was still a carnivore, like it was a T-Rex, Velociraptor, and this little guy, they were all coming after you. Any shape or size, you're getting pecked apart or ripped apart. I would for sure have this guy as a pet, with his little, his little cone hands just tapping around. That'd be so cute until he, you know, eats your neck. Number three, Spinosaurus. Another Jurassic Park star, and rightfully so. The largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time, even bigger than a T-Rex. Can you imagine? Oh my God. 93 million years ago, they stopped terrorizing the lands of what is now Egypt and Morocco. If you didn't already guess, its name translates to spine lizard, and that spine was quite long. The spine reached about seven feet tall, and the Spinosaurus itself would measure up to 60 feet long. And aside for its back, one of the most notable features is its six foot long head. Its mouth was similar to a crocodile's with straight sharp teeth, not curved like the other ones, but like straight. So these teeth could stab right through any slippery fish, just a big skewer for a tooth. That being said, paleontologists from the University of Pennsylvania believe that this guy used to swim as well. Because where the first Spinosaurus fossils were found, that used to be the Bahara Oasis Desert in Egypt, which was a massive swamp. Water or land, I want nothing to do with this thing. And neither did all the people in Jurassic Park. They're like, this guy's gonna kill us, let's get out of here. Number two, the devil frog. Catching frogs is a fun way to pass the time as a kid. You grab it and you're like, oh, and then it hops away, it's magical. But 68 million years ago, if you saw a frog, you would have to stay far away from it or else you would probably lose all of your fingers and hands. It was a lot bigger than frogs today as most of these things are. It was on average the same size as a beach ball and they lived on the island of Madagascar. Now they thrived there because no theropod dinosaurs could get there. Like if that little guy with the horns for hands came along, he wouldn't stand a chance. Its bite is similar to that of a wolf or a tiger, which is remarkable considering its size. Recently, however, researchers found a fossil of the devil frog and they believe that it once had spikes and a turtle-like shell. As if the devil frog couldn't get any cooler, now you gotta add spikes. Sick. Right now we have the horned frog, which is a lot smaller, but even after this many million years of evolution, its jaw is also remarkably strong. It can still take your fingers. And finally, number one, the Carnotaurus. When I watched that Disney's dinosaur movie in theaters, I cried when this dude came out. It was way too scary. I was not ready, and neither were the animals that had the misfortune of crossing this thing's path 69 million years ago. 
nice. They were around the same size as the T-Rex. They came in at like 29 feet long, but they're nicknamed meat-eating bulls. They would run at about 25 miles an hour. They're one of the fastest and largest moving theropods to ever live. Its arms were smaller than that of a T-Rex, but honestly, it didn't matter because this one has horns like a bull, hence the meat-eating bull alias. It was discovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in Argentina. Now they've only discovered one skeleton of this thing, so hopefully there weren't too many of these things poking around. Literally, poking around. Guys, those are 10 more prehistoric creatures that are no longer with us, gladly. And honestly, as fascinating as these things are, I get itchy talking about them. So let's leave these ones in the past. If a part three is in your deepest desires, let us know, hit that thumbs up, and we'll be back shortly. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Life's Biggest Questions. Peace.